uh, as we move to the uh, New Brighton submissions. And I'm kind of hoping that uh, with the live streaming that we have these days, uh, that people um, who are on the list of um, residents who made submissions and asked to be um, heard by the council uh, in relation to facilities and infrastructure in the eastern part of Christchurch, that if they are watching online and they're expecting to be heard later in the day, please come on now. <laughs> it would be great if you could come and, and join us. Um, and the way that I kind of want to handle it um, from here on in is that I'm not going to run the clock. Uh, you know, I think that five minute submissions are um, unfortunate because they don't give people enough time to really express their views. And I think that this is an important opportunity for uh, people to have a say. There has been uh, obviously some miscommunication <coughs> around uh, the, the, the nature of the um, hearing today. It was certainly not our desire to do so. Uh, we asked uh, people to be here at, at 9.30 this morning and um, I really, it, it's unfortunate that some clearly uh, don't think that they uh, want to, uh, don't really realise that, that, that the idea was to have everyone here and that those that wanted to be heard after an initial presentation would do so. This was the arrangement that we entered into with the uh, promenade uh, group. Uh, they made a, a very powerful submission and then there were a number of submissions that were attached to that or included with it who all wanted to support the promenade. And, uh, but with the, with the numbers that wanted to be heard, I think there were 80 that wanted to be heard on the promenade issue alone, uh, we contacted all of those, a, a large number of people on that list um, were surprised to find that they'd ticked a box that said they wanted to be heard, so uh, we were able to sort of um, cross them off the list. But by approaching the organisers of that petition, uh, we were able to get agreement that they would come and make a significant presentation, which they did, and it was an exceptionally powerful presentation. I think every councillor um, saw that. And, uh, and then individuals who wanted to comment as well were invited to come forward, and they did. And they talked about how important the promenade would be um, to them and their families. And I thought that that was an exceptionally powerful way to present. And in fact, I, I read on one of the Facebook comments that somebody said, aha, maybe it's not the quantity of submissions, maybe it's the, the quality and the um, presentation of a longer period where you had time for questions that might be a better way to present and then just have the smaller presentations afterwards um, really to back up the main submission. When we tried to find the, um, the person who authored uh, the document that is the basis for all of the um, remaining submissions, uh, we did manage to find her, but she said she wasn't responsible for any of the the, the people that had um, signed it. So it wasn't possible to bring forward um, an individual to, um, to lead the way. So we've invited Andrea um, Cummings as the chair of the Burwood Pegasus Community Board to present uh, an overarching view of the issues that are raised in these submissions. And then we're going to invite people to individually come forward they can come forward individually or they can come forward in groups, as was the case uh, with the promenade group. Um, on a personal level, I'm, I do find this very difficult and, <laughs> and I'm not going to cry. So, um, but, you know, to read the submissions and to read how much faith people put in me personally as their Member of Parliament and to read that people feel that in electing me as their mayor that I would stand up for the East and to read how let down people feel in me. <laughs> um, I just, all I really want to do is to say I'm really sorry. There is no intention around this table to let anyone down. And the wonderful thing that has come of this terrible process, which we will never repeat, I promise that, um, the wonderful thing that's come from it 
is that there isn't a member of this council that doesn't understand how important it is to prioritise work in the East. And there isn't actually, I don't think, anyone who's made a submission to this council from anywhere in the city that doesn't understand that the priority has to be the East. But there are people who have looked for us to find solutions to problems that are not entirely of our making, and the solutions can't just be found in this space. So I want to repeat what I said to the young man that came here from Kashmir High School earlier on. The government is about to release a transition recovery plan for the city. The transition is how do you transition away from the domination of the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Act and the authority that has been put in place by central government to, a, to local government leadership and community engagement in the decisions that affect the recovery of our city. And every single person who has submitted on this plan must submit to the government on its transition. Do we want to be in a position where we, as a city, are making decisions for ourselves? And the question is, are we ready to do so? And can we back each other to do so as communities and as a council and our community boards together? The silver lining, and I always look for one because although I'm not appearing to be one at the moment, I am an optimist. The silver lining in all of this is that the New Brighton community is more united than I have ever seen it. The fact that they now have a business association that includes the landowners, which has always been the flaw in the ability to do anything in New Brighton, is fantastic. And I think Paul Zarnan deserves an honour for what he's been able to do. And I think that the community itself has actually proved itself to be more united than, than, than ever before and in a way that has enabled the business community, the landowners, the local residents and the wider community that value the resource that it is um, to come together as one voice. And that, to me, has to be the silver lining of a not very good process. So, on that note, I will hand over to you, Andrea, and uh, if you would like to begin the presentation on the New Brighton submissions. Okay, how, um, th thank you, Mia. Um, Melian, um, how do you follow on from that? Um, thank you for your passion um, that we've seen today, and it, it's been so good to see over the last couple of weeks of hearings that you guys have heard our voice. Um, I think you've kind of just done half my speech for me. Um, I'm sort of trying to... Uh, I, I wasn't aware that I was to sort of submit... On, be the overarching submitter for this, so I haven't written a speech. I haven't written my speech based on that. I was merely sort of introducing the community to you. No, no, that's fine. Um, that's so, fine. If, if that's okay, I'll read my speech. It may not all be completely relevant as it was when I wrote it. Um, um, so I sit here today feeling very proud, proud of our community, New Brighton, a community that has been hammered, years of decline, thousands of earthquakes and what seems at times like blow after blow from those charged with our recovery. And I don't just mean you guys, oh, trust me. <laughs> this is a community that could have given up and ex just accepted their fate. Yet over the past year, I have seen a revolution taking place in New Brighton, where other suburbs around us are wilting under the strain of insurance issues and roadworks, etc. This suburb has united and decided to stand up. It's been incredible to watch. This community has become educated on the ways and means of council. It's incredible to see how many people now watch the live streaming of council meetings and how many really do follow what's going on. So hi to all you new Brighton guys watching today. It's been mind-blowing to hear people working together to help others fill out submission forms. It was amazing to see the turnout at the first public meeting Paul Zarnan and I called and then to watch the groundswell of enthusiasm turn into a sip and submit nights at Switch, where local businesses sponsored the photocopying and even provided pens. Facebook was alight with our community, activating our community. The council asked the city to tell them what they wanted. 
in and thought of the long-term plan, and New Brighton did. Hundreds and hundreds of submissions, not just about a single issue, not just having a whinge and cup, not just because everyone else was doing it, but every submission was from the heart. Every submission is from someone who cared enough to get passionate, and get off their seat and do something about it. Each submission has a story behind it, from the seven-year-old who just wanted to tell you how she loves New Brighton, to the man who was illiterate, who had lived his whole life in New Brighton and watched every day what was going on, to the stranger who sat down and spent half an hour helping him put his thoughts on paper. It was incredible to watch this community feel empowered and feel united in their passion. At the beginning of this LTP process, I had a number of discussions with people about what should be the main issues we tried to get our community to focus on in their submissions. But it quickly became apparent that this wasn't about one footpath or one camping ground. It was about a community that feel forgotten. A community that feel just like because they suffered the worst, they have to accept the least. It's about a community that feel they're not getting a fair go. Some issues have been around for 20 years or more. Others are earthquake related. We could spend all day looking back at the why and how we got to where we are today. But I don't want to do that, and I'm pretty sure nobody here wants to either. We want to look forward. The existing budgets for the East seem woeful. Most of it is simply patching what has been damaged. Almost none of it gets us betterment. And I think that's we want, what we want and deserve. We are a destination. We are where people want to live and have their needs met locally. We have an amazing number of natural assets and we want to protect them where necessary and also utilise them for recreation and tourism. New Brighton knows it has something special. It knows what it, has to be take, what it takes to be awesome. It is worth it. So while I hold no mandate to speak on behalf of those who have submitted um, here today, and I've not been asked to by them, I do want to ask you to listen to the issues and the passion and allow this community to flourish for the benefit of the whole city. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if you want to take some questions just to kick things off, or do you want to just hand over to the I, individual I, I can. I mean, I've had a quick flick through through um, the submissions, um, but again, as, as I said, I don't. Um, I don't even pretend to, to uh, speak on behalf of of the submissions. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll if you're going to stay, then we could invite you back later on, um, maybe for a bit of a round table. Yeah, I'll, yep. be, I'll be here for a little bit, hopefully, if I can. Okay. I'll have to um, bribe my babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Pauline, okay. Pauline, would you like to come forward? Pauline's still recovering from a bit of a fall, so... <laughs> you want me to put this chair down a wee bit for you? No, no. That's fine. Okay. Just take the time. Yeah. <laughs> move a lot. Uh, page 219 is Pauline's submission. Thank you. Thank you for being here, and thank you also for all being positive. We can't look back, although I'm going to, in my own stance. I was involved in the Save Railway campaign in the late 1980s, and I experienced, alongside my husband, throughout New Zealand, and in particular, over the following three years of men in their 50s put on the scrap heap. Why? Because they sold our assets. Jobs were lost. Communities vanished. and the government did not account for it. What is happening today bears the same outlook. I'm not political in any shape or form, but I know the experience. We are, have rebought the railways. We are now suffering for the likes of Rolleston, Rangura, to name a couple, where we used to be able to take the train to relatives, went backwards and forwards at least three times a day. 
What are we trying to do? Exactly the same thing. That is my background. The other phrase my mum used to use, change what you can change and leave well alone that can't change. I now speak about Victoria Square. That has been the gem over the last four years. It has been a real lively place from picnicking, meeting friends, walking in the flowing river of peace. Yes, repair things, i.e. the bower found, the riverbanks. We're not saying not do anything, but what we are saying Leave well alone and don't spend the money where it's not necessary. Going back to the asset cupboard. Ten years down the track, will it be bare? Because we've sold off the jewels. Yes, there is room to sell what is really not the jewels. But the likes of the airport that are inputting again back into our city council. And don't forget, the, the major area of the city council funding comes from the ratepayer. We are broken still. We're still working through shanty repairs on um, earthquakes. We are still working through the likes of New Brighton Road flooding the whole time and getting the high tide up our drives as well. These are the things, the practical things, that a lot of the East people are working through. But the gems are the apple trees at the moment on empty sections, helping a family across the road. The chutneys, the jars of chutneys exchanging, tomato sauce exchanging, just to name a couple of things. Yes, our neighbourhoods have started to get back to community, back to realities, and back to life. So when you're looking at assets, please leave the jewels in the cupboard. Fight for what will help in the future. And particularly my great-grandchildren now, they are still part of this city. That's what we have to look forward to. The other major thing is New Brighton. The first year following the earthquakes, and particularly the first six months, my neighbour and I were having to walk round from Palmer's Road, almost level in Bower Ave, to get a loo. And going across to a foster family at the other side of the city, there were three loos in a spate of two blocks. They are the sorts of things that we in the East had to put up with. We're now still putting up with it, as I said, New Brighton Road, but it's having an impact on families Cars, I've had my car, and my car is a late, well, it's, it's a 2005, I think it is, 2004 model. But I've already had to have suspension done, new tyres, and in fact, 
because it's a front wheel drive and I'm not a mechanic, it's had to have two sets of new tyres on the front. These are costs that restricted families in um, paying up. For me personally, we lost our whole community. Mm. School, church, neighbourhood, to name but lot. We're having to travel now to even meet up with those communities on a weekly basis. And what do we have to put up with? The roads. So let's be, get back to core structures in the east before we look at the grandio replacement of Pioneer, for argument's sake. What we've got to try and do is get people back to the communities that they uh, have been part of the grassroots, but also the linkages. Take our bowling club, for our argument's sake. Many of our members now cannot get a bus from A to B, because where are the buses? There's so few far in between, and particularly in the east. The routes are not practical in lots of cases. So let's get back to the core stuff. I suppose that, in a nutshell, but in relation to the promenade, I think it's a great idea. But I think one that comes to mind that's been floating for many, many years, even when my children were going to Don Dalton's swimming in Bar um, Bow Hill Road. Road, is the salt pools. Yeah. That would be positive. Even the pier, even if it's repaired, the first part, the structural part that's reasonably sound from what I hear, and gradually extended again as money permits. And I can remember taking my children and neighbourhood children down, fishing off the cockles and I think one caught a seagull at one stage. <laughs> but those little pleasures, let's get back to those sorts of things. Yes, the east leaves a hell of a wind and it is cold, bleak, and the township itself is $2 shops. I agree with that. But let's try and get back. Some of the well-known firms to take the plunge and regrowth. Because I believe in the future, with the big schools going up in Kiwi 2, i.e. Shirley, Voice High and Avonside, I think it's a positive move. It will bring back communities and bring back the strength. I know some pools will not be rebuilt there, but there are other positive things. I do not believe the Wainoni, or at least the Aranui complex for education, it will do nothing. Children will feel lost in the city itself. That's personal belief and, and years of experience in social work. But that's basically what I want to say, is to get back to positive, get back to grassroots, and please look at New Brighton Road. Yeah. <laughs> that is my plead. We're looking at New Brighton Road, but... Um 
you know, that we don't know what the future of New Brighton Road no. will be because it is so low. Oh, it's, no. it, it has sunk so much. And, of course, the stock banks are now so high that you can't even see the mm. river from New Brighton mm. Road and, and the river comes to New Brighton Road <laughs> regularly, um, you know, from underneath. So we've got um, a lot of work to do there. So we're, what we're looking at is, is you know, do, do we have to move New Brighton Road? Um, should we move the stock banks out? You know, that, that's why we've got a lot of work to do. Mm. We're not 100% sure. So it's not as though... Yeah, I mean, because it faces onto the red zone, because that whole strip of, as you know, because I know where you live and I know that your neighbours have gone for that red zoning reason, but and we've been given an opportunity by the government to look at what our needs as a city are in terms of, you know, potential for stormwater improvement, um, obviously the, the, the land drainage, you know, how, how, do we, how do we use all of the... Um, opportunities that perhaps the red zone offers to fix some of the problems that our city faces as well. So um, we'll be a wee while working out what we're going to do with New Brighton Road. Um, and But we'll be talking to community first before we make any decisions because we are very, we're very clear that it has to be an engagement with local communities before decisions are made. Well, I think the other thing on a personal note from... Um, my personal point of view is that there needs to be re-looked, i.e. City Council, Sarah, Government, whatever, on the low-lying areas of uh, Palmer's, uh, Baker, um, Bowhill, uh, Barav, the new Brighton Road end, because we've already had a further... 14 mil um, drop. Yeah. I believe the land's still settling. So, yes. yeah. Um, Phil? Thank you very, very much, Pauline, for your very deeply moving submission. Um, I just want to ask you about something related to the, the, the land having dropped. And people really are enthusiastic and understand that about having a promenade along the top of the dunes. And I'm just wondering if, in fact, when we look carefully at the science, if, in fact, we find we have to be really careful about engineering anything on top of the dunes, mm. would a smaller, um, smaller scale walkway for not only local people but city people, would that also um, sort of meet, meet some of what the new Brighton people might like to see? It's hard to say. Again, I would rely um, purely on the engineering side of it. I think anything too high, you've then got to have um, fencing, if you like, or some sort of railing system, particularly if you take um, people with uh, walkers and... I could see limited use, if you like, and thinking about a lot of the people in that area are of the older, um, including myself, <laughs> of that um, group. So whether they would use it uh, to that extent or whether it would become a skateway and a... Um, cycle way and again the older people probably would not use it if it's a com combination or whatever I, I'm i not engineer <laughs> nowhere near it <laughs> but do you know what I mean I would probably rely, rely on expert type information it's great look thank you well I mean I, th I think Pauline thank you very much I um I think we'll move on to the to the next submission. But thank you very much for making the effort to come in, and I hope you're 100% soon. Oh, you're just kidding. <laughs> no, Great. Um, Sylvia Smith, would you?